This month we have some news relating to the Pine Tab 2 and Star 64 as well as some PinePhone Pro developments. This is the video version of the community update which is more of a summary so for more info about all these topics check out the blog version and also thanks to Lucas, Thanos, Dank12, Alex, and JF for their contributions to this update. We attended Fostum in early February and had the opportunity to showcase many of our popular and upcoming devices and it was a great experience to have the opportunity to speak with many developers and members of the community. We would like to thank everyone who took the time to stop by, hang out, and chat at our stall. As always, our stall was bustling both days and kept us occupied for the duration of the conference. If you didn't make us this year, then come see us in 2024. The Pine Store has been recovering from the Chinese New Year backlog. As in the case every year, support staff have returned to a high volume of unanswered emails, and the shipping department has had to deal with pending shipments. This resulted in longer than usual response time, which we're sorry for, but everything should be returning back to normal now, and you should see more activity from us in the coming weeks. We'll be hosting the quarterly Q&A on March 17th, and this Q&A is an opportunity for you to ask questions and have them answered live, as we will be taking questions from the chat and live streaming to YouTube as well as PeerTube if we can get it to work. You can join us and ask us questions in IRC, Discord, Matrix, and Telegram, all of which are bridged, and there is no excuse not to participate. Pine64EU has now received a complete hardware restock, and as always, you can see the Pine Phone, Pine Soul V2, Pine Time, Pine Power, and other usual suspects available for purchase. This month, the Pine Phone keyboard case is now making a return alongside the Pine Phone keyboard case bundle. The EU store will also be adding the PineBuds Pro to its assortment. As for newsflash this month, a new release of Arcade is out for the Rock 64, Rock Pro 64, and Pinebook Pro, and the experience is downright amazing. Arcade is optimized for the Rock 64 and Rock Pro 64, which results in nearly flawless emulation of nearly all included systems. It has recently been tested running PSP and Dreamcast on the Rock Pro 64, and the vast majority of games run at full speed. Needless to say, older systems won't pose any problem on either the Rock 64 or Rock Pro 64, and it's pretty awesome. Esso Quartz patches for PCIe 2, Video Output GPU, and HDMI and Sound were merged into Mainline Kernel 6.2. This is very good news not only for regular end users, but also corporate customers already using Esso Quartz or looking to pick up Esso Quartz for their particular use case. MC Server Hosting had the opportunity to try out the Esso Quartz Blade and were delighted to find that it includes PoE and it comes with a stable Manjaro image with a Kubernetes ARM package ready for testing Rook self network storage. They wrote that Esso Quartz low power ups consumption is an economical choice for lab testing and that they believe that a set of these blades and two PoE switches could even handle a large cluster with the proper crush map. Those of you who already own a pair of PineBuds Pro and have experienced issues with ANC in the left earbud, now reflashing the stock firmware fixes the problem. This has been confirmed independently by a number of people at this point and can be considered an established fix. Instructions for flashing the firmware can be found on the wiki. There has been significant progress on porting Linux to the AUX64 since our last update. Several divers have been added and we're getting closer to having the AUX64 as a viable Linux device for your projects every day. A build root configuration has been made enabling easy creation of images to flash to the AUX64. Image drivers have been added for the SD card slot, removing the tight storage space limitations of SBI flash, and we now have basic drivers for the GPIO and parts of the hardware cryptography acceleration. The AUX64 has been on market for two months and is already one of the best selling Pine64 devices. Some early adopters have complained that the OS flashing process is unclear and undocumented, and one of the early adopters going by the handle Platima Tinkers has successfully put together a video documenting the progress. The 15 minute video details the board, the necessary steps to flash and boot Linux, and it is worth watching. A new and redesigned 65 watt portable GAN Pine Power will be back in stock, and it comes with adapters for all regions and fixes a key problem with the original. Namely, it no longer falls off your wall socket, which was an issue for US customers. This month, we're happy to let you know that the Pine Tab 2 will be available in two hardware configurations, 4GB of LPDDR4 RAM and a 64GB eMMC flash, and 8GB of RAM with 128 gigs of flash. The lower end version will be priced at $159, and the higher end version will be priced at $209. Aside from the RAM and storage configuration, everything else about the two versions are identical and both come with a detachable keyboard by default. The Pine Tab 2 entered production earlier this month, and we expect both hardware versions will be available simultaneously in the Pine Store sometime in April. People got their first hands-on experience with the Pine Tab 2 at Fostum, and Lucas shared some of his experience with the device. He writes that the hardware's construction is truly next level and the most refined Pine64 branded device this far. The metal construction in conjunction with the fused tempered glass LCD panel results in a very robust and sturdy build. There's no creaking, no bending, and no rough edges. 
The Pine Tab 2 can easily be passed off as a device twice the price. The LCD bezels are thin enough and a massive improvement from the original. The LCD does get bright enough to be clearly visible in a well-lit room too. The keyboard, which doubles as a protective cover, is also well constructed. It is sturdy, the keys have plenty of travel, the trackpad works well, and attaching slash detaching the keyboard from the Pine Tab 2 is a seamless experience. The stand is a solid piece of metal attached to a solid metal hinge. When opened, the Pine Tab 2 is not going anywhere. The stand's construction is rock solid. There is a cutout for the rear camera and all the buttons and I.O. are unobstructed when the device is mounted in its case. As for the software side, it is further along than many of you may think. The only three things that do not work are USB 3.0, cameras, and Bluetooth. Experience using the Pine Tab is on par with any higher-end SBC, allowing for comfortable terminal or office suite work, as well as browsing the web and watching web or local videos. We are thrilled to be able to demo the Star 64 running desktop Linux at Fostum. Iru Fan, sorry I'm butchering that, one of our longest standing contributors at Pine64 successfully managed to put together a demo build of Debian with XFCE for our stall. While the demo was rudimentary, it managed to show off full-blown Linux running on the RISC-V SoC. The setup was pretty cool, featuring a 1080p touch panel which worked remarkably well, as well as a more traditional keyboard and mouse input. As cool as the demo was, it also showed how much work will be needed for RISC-V to reach parity with other Linux platforms like ARM or x86. For instance, installing Firefox cannot be done through apt because a RISC-V version is not in the Debian repos yet, which means it needs to be compiled from source. With this, we hope to make the Star 64 an affordable and readily available RISC-V platform to continue to make everyone interested in development. The goal of Star 64 at this point is to drive development on RISC-V and speed up the SoC's bring up process. Finally, we're happy to let you know that it is finally entered production, and while there is not a firm availability date yet, you can expect units to be available from the initial production run in the next 6 to 10 weeks. For those of you who have a PinePhone keyboard case, Maggie released version 1.3 of his open source keyboard firmware. Firmware brings massive improvement to the phone's battery life when connected to the keyboard, with a 30-fold reduction of power consumption, thereby extending the standby time from 23 days to nearly 1.8 years. Maggie has also released kernel 6.1 for PinePhone and PinePhone Pro, with the new kernel having the LCD panel running at the correct 60Hz instead of the suboptimal 53Hz refresh rate. The kernel also brought an integration of the power manager for the PinePhone Pro keyboard, and this driver has a handful of improvements in its newest iteration including better battery power reporting and higher power efficiency. The phone can now use the keyboard's battery directly instead of needlessly having to recharge the phone's internal battery first. In other welcome software news, the PinePhone Pro has now received support from LibCamera. With the PinePhone Pro's camera sensor drivers now being upstreamed and expected in mainstream kernel 6.3, support for the device has been merged in version 0.0.4 of LibCamera. For those of you who wish to give it a try, it is available on mobile via apt or the GNOME store. Apache NutX has also been ported to the PinePhone by Lepion, and NutX is an RTOS system primarily used on microcontrollers which brings an emphasis on standard compliance and a small footprint. This is beneficial to the original PinePhone which benefits from running lightweight OSs. This will not be an alternative to Linux on the PinePhone, at least not at this time due to missing drivers and functionality. However, this is a valuable port for educational purposes. Back to the PinePhone Pro, a demo of Ubuntu Touch was shown at Falstom, and the performance was indistinguishable from other mid to high tier phones that were on display. To say that it runs well is an understatement. The UI is perfectly responsive, applications launch fast, and all of this is on top of mainline with open source GPU drivers, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and even the modem were all recognized on the current build. It should be noted however that this is not an official port, and it is unknown whether UB ports is expected to keep working on this device, although we certainly hope so. A number of the most popular OSs have received updates in the past few weeks, and this includes Manjaro Beta 29, Dank Nix's Arch, post-market OS, as well as Mobian, most of which have moved to Maggie's kernel 6.1.x, which benefit from the 60Hz refresh rate on the PinePhone Pro and the keyboard case driver optimizations. It is worth noting that post-market OS has received an update to XMO, which is now on release 1.13.0 and includes a number of improvements. Lastly, Adam Pig and contributors have done a lot of work on the PinePhone Pro Sailfish OS port. This is the third year in a row that the PinePhone port of Sailfish OS tops the chart on unofficially supported devices, and for a good reason too. Sailfish OS now has support for both the keyboard case and the cameras. For the last topic, PineTime, 
JF has been busy and therefore there hasn't been an Affinity Time release recently, but there are more than 30 pull requests that have already been merged into development branch since the last release. Among other things, you can expect better battery life monitoring and a few UI improvements in the next version. We're reviewing changes that will improve the heart rate measurement, the addition of weather info in the Pine Time style, and many other features that may be reviewed or merged in the future. There's also been a new Windows companion app and Joaquim, sorry I'm butchering that, has built a replacement microcontroller board for the Pine Time which features features the more powerful NRF52840, which provides better performance in memory than the NRF52832. And there has been custom firmware that runs on the board, which looks great. Anyways, that is all the news for this month, and see you next month.